Okay, so 52Pi have sent me some more Pi 5 cases and two very different ones. Uh, this is a plastic case with a fan and also a heat sink and also this one is a proper tower kit with an ice tower cooler in it and also a little display as well and I wonder if we can fit an NVMe drive in there somewhere. So let's have a look at these first. So they're both the same. One of them is black and one of them is white and it was the white one that interested me because I haven't seen any white Pi 5 cases yet. So it's a simple plastic case with all the usual cutouts. It does have a power switch it looks like so when the Pi is in there I'm guessing that sticks out a bit. Uh, it also has these two screw holes so we can mount it on the wall if we want to. But yeah, lots of ventilation in the top as well and it just pulls apart like that. I've also got a load of thermal pads and some clear strips which I think glow red, I'm not sure. Um, certainly from the pictures they look red. I also have some plastic screws, some metal screws and some little pads to go on the base of it. And this is a aluminium cooler, but it also has PWM control. So it's got the, the normal fitting for a Pi 5. So you don't have to do anything with most operating systems. The fan will come on when it gets too hot and it will go off when it's cooled sufficiently. So Armour Light V5. So there's two full sets of thermal pads and it also tells me in the documentation which components they go on. And I've seen now that the strips are three different colours, so you can choose what colour strip you put in. I think I'm going to leave mine out. It's a little bit of extra ventilation, but I just quite like the whole all-white design. So that's how it looks all put together. Uh, the, there's two screws on the underside of here that attach the heatsink to the board, uh, and they're the little plastic screws that I used, and these metal screws hold it down into the base. The button is really nice because uh, it still feels micro switched uh, and it's protruding which is good. I can pop the lid on so it must be this way around and it just clips on so it's very easy to take off and put on if you need to use the GPIO pins or anything. So let's test the micro SD slot so if I pop an SD in and take it out yeah it's very straightforward and there's enough room which is nice so let's plug all this in and switch on. Okay, so that's booted up and it sounds like it's going to be a very quiet fan because they always come on when you initially switch it on and uh, it, it was pretty quiet, but I'm going to have to get it running by running some tests. You can see it's got a green light, which you can see through the grill there and also through the plastic here. So let's run a few stress tests. First of all, I'll turn on P sensor because it remembers how fast the fan has run and it also remembers what temperature it got to. And in the document, if you've downloaded my version of KDE Plasma, um, there is a stress test in there. Yeah, here we go, this sysbench test, which maxes out the CPU. So we'll copy that, we'll open a terminal with Control alt t and we'll paste that in and run it. So let's minimise this one so we can still see P sensor. And you can see the temperature at the moment, 47 degrees. No fan at the moment, you can see the CPU is working at 100% and the fan has come on, although I can't hear it at all. 1130 RPM, so very slow. So I'm running a second test now. The fan still didn't get very fast and you can see the maximum temperature at the moment is 57 degrees. So that was at 58 degrees and 1391 RPM. I, I genuinely can't hear it in the room. I can hear birds tweeting outside, so it's really quiet in here. Um, but I can't hear the fan. We definitely have had pretty consistently good fans on Raspberry Pi 5. The Raspberry Pi 4, in the early days, there was a lot of really quite noisy fans. Yeah, that's, so that's done two tests now. I'm just going to put a third one on, and then I think I'm going to just let it play some YouTube video to try and let the temperature build up a bit. But uh, I think it's, it's going to do a great job because it's a nice size aluminium heatsink with a fan. So I'm going to run a YouTube video at 1080 for half an hour or so and see how well that temperature holds. I'll put this RetroPie video on because it's 44 minutes long. And come back when all that's done. Okay, so that's been running for over half an hour after all those stress tests and it's still only got to 61 degrees and the fans only had to go up to 2,944. Obviously it may be different if you live in a hot climate, but uh, I would say that's more than adequate it's certainly doing a decent job. Right, let's have a look at the mini tower. 
I don't know if there will be enough space in here for the NVMe drive, but it's worth having a look. And it'll be interesting to see how the display sets up. So it's a nice dark grey colour. You can see that it will display at the top there. And the cabling is all neatly put inside here already. We've got our GPIO pins, pretty detailed instructions. And then the mount for the uh, ice tower cooler. I've already shown how to fit an ice tower cooler before, so I won't go through all that. I'll just put it together and see how much room we've got. So this is how much room we've got inside. If I tip that back, you can see there's a fair amount of height above it. And we could always build up the pins here and stick something on top. Um, but the board, I think it's just that bit too big. Yeah, because these bits stick up, I think we're going to struggle with that. But we might be able to go... I know we can't go underneath because if we go underneath, then we build these up. Uh, so if I was to use this board, which goes directly underneath the pie, obviously they're not going to line up. So I can't use that one. Uh, this one uses the GPIO pins, which I can't use because the ice tower cooler gets in the way of that one. So this is the only option. But what I'm thinking is I could put it on one of the sides. So once this is plugged in, I could put the drive something like that. Now. Why this particularly works for me is because I regularly change the drive. So if it was up in there, it wouldn't be accessible. But if I can pop it on the side here, I would have access to that drive. I would have the fan blowing past it, uh, so it would be cooling it as well. I think that would be perfect. So I've got all the cabling for the little screen, uh, which is going all the way up the top and into the side here, which is nice and neat. Uh, I've also got the fan cable on as well. You can see I've secured this in place. Okay, so it appears to be sucking in from this direction and blowing through the cooler, which looks really nice all lit up there. So I'm gonna put the NVMe on this side. Next question is, am I gonna have a cable long enough to go through? Luckily, the EDATEC comes with a really long cable, so hopefully that one will fit. Now, can I get that out without taking this completely apart? It's touching on the bottom of this heat sink, so I'm going to have to just raise this a bit so I can lift that up and get this out. I don't want to pull it. I don't want to break it. I've done done the screws enough to be able to lift that up. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, there you go. Nice long cable. And I'm going to have to slide this out to get that in because that's really difficult to get in. Okay, I think that's in place. Actually, I'm going to test it before I put it all back together again. So it's going to go out and in like that. And it must be that way around, I think. Because I have found I've definitely got PCIs in slightly wrong before and they, they don't boot. Uh, which is probably to be expected. Right, let's put this Patriot drive on here. Got a separate video about these and compatibility and things like that. Uh, and let's plug it all in. Okay, we have a light on my monitor. Although uh, PCIe not detected. So I've tried this several times and I can't get it to work uh, with this board. And it obviously was working before with the EDTEC board. So I'm not sure if it's not compatible. I'm sure it would be the same. Um, but uh, I put the standard one back on and it's booted straight away. So I'm going to copy the way round that this is and hopefully I can get it to boot. So this cable is the same on both sides. So it's blank on this side and both of it are pins, which is the opposite of what this is. So I need to twist it around. So if I'm doing it this way, uh, there would be a twist in it, which probably makes it go around corners better. And I think every time I was doing it, I was doing it completely straight because I just thought it was the same. Right, so never assume. Okay, so still not booting. Okay, so I've tried it for ages and I definitely can't get it to work with this cable, which is a shame, but it's not a feature of this case to have an NVMe drive. I just thought it'd be nice to see if I could get one in there. So um, 
The only other option I've got is possibly to mount it on the outside, but for now I think I'm going to stick to the standard case as is and build it up as it should be. So here's the two cables side by side. So as you can see, I've got terminals on this side and blank on this side. On this one, I've got terminal on this side, blank on here. And if I spin it over, let's go this way so you can read the writing on it. I've got a terminal here and I've got blank on the other side. So yeah, maybe it just doesn't work. Okay, so I plugged it back into the EDATEC board and it's booted straight away. So it clearly is a slightly different cable. I definitely messed around with that way too long, but you can see the cable is back in place. And uh, because it's a completely different board, I guess it's just configured differently. Okay, so it's all put together and uh, I think it looks really nice. Obviously I haven't activated the display yet. And uh, accessibility is good for the power button. The SD card's quite hard to get in and out. Um, it's, it's a big hole, but you can't get underneath it. I mean, you can get it out with tweezers and you can get it out if you put your fingers together, but it's not super easy to get in and out, but you know, it is, it is fine. So let's put that software on it. So I tried going through the initial instructions and it didn't work for me, but in the back, I use this GitHub and this is working fine now and I'll just show it with Python. So there's loads of demos included. I've put my favorite ones on here. So if I stop this one and select crawl and hit play. So this one is a Star Wars one a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And it scrolls through the opening credits. This is font awesome, which just basically displays various different fonts and logos. Invaders is probably one of my favorite. It's a Space Invaders theme, but it actually plays the game. And it does look very cool. More gaming with Jet Set Willy. This is from the ZX Spectrum back in the day. Matrix is going to be popular. This is Pi Logo, which I'm sure is also going to be popular. This is Runner. And he runs back and forth. System histogram, and this gives things like temperature, uptime, so you can see my pie's been on for an hour and a quarter. System info extended is very useful. So you can see temperature, CPU usage, memory, disk usage, it comes up with the IP address and the uptime. I'd say probably the most useful of all the screens. And this is TV Snow. Please do not adjust your set. So a couple of really nice cases from 52Pi, uh, two very different designs and each have their own place. I really like the LED display as I'm sure lots of others are going to. Uh, I like the LED lights, it looks brilliant at night. Uh, but also there's this very practical one with a really nice aluminium cooler on it. So yeah, great work by 52Pi. I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.